Now, the government has revealed plans to crack down on developers who sell new build houses as leaseholds rather than freeholds, meaning that some buyers are left facing what have been described as extortionate fees. One of Britain's major house builders, Taylor Wimpy, has already been forced to face the problem after it sold homes subject to ground fees that doubled every 10 years. We didn't even know that Taylor Wimpy had sold on these leases. We found out later because we got a very uh, pleasant, should I say, letter from the new freeholder saying you owe us your ground rent by this date and if you don't pay it, we're going to bill you for being late. I used a law firm that they recommended and yes, when you look back at the paperwork, it does state that the, the lease doubles, but it's not highlighted in big red flashing letters. At no point did people say, you do realise this could cause you an issue to to sell it on in the future. You do realise this is particularly onerous, there's not many like these out there. And neither did they say, and do you realise by 2060 that means you're going to be paying £10,000 a year? Well, Taylor Wimpy, which is just one of the house builders who sold leasehold properties, released a statement today saying that it has already stopped the practice. It told us we have also introduced a scheme to help Taylor Wimpy customers who bought homes from us with a 10-year doubling ground rent clause. The firm said we are working hard with freeholders to convert our customers' doubling leases at our expense to ones that resolve concerns around how easy it is to sell. Well, the government's proposals are still subject to consultation, but the community secretary, Sadid Javid, said it would ensure that houses are sold on fair terms. This, this is a big step, but you know, we've been very clear. Now, when I've published my white paper on housing, I deliberately called it, it's about fixing that broken market. The, there's many things that are wrong with our housing market, and this is one of them, and that's why we set out these plans. But where markets are not working fairly for people, where people are being you know, just, uh, I think you know, it, this is a form of financial abuse, where this is happening, it must be put to an end. It's the job of government to do that, and that's why we'll be taking this action. Well, I'm joined from Liverpool by the Labour MP and member of the all-party parliamentary group on leasehold reform, Justin Madder. So, Justin, this is uh, great news for people going forward, but what about the hundreds of thousands of people who are stuck on these onerous leasehold terms already? Well, that's the, uh, that's the big question, isn't it? Uh, I don't think we've heard anything today about uh, solid plans to deal with uh, the people that you say are already stuck on the onerous lease, some of whom are unable to sell their properties. I believe that unless... There is a clear government plan to deal with those people, and um, this has the potential to destabilise the housing market. Now, we've just been uh, quoting the uh, statement from Taylor Wimpy. They obviously saw the writing on the wall and uh, suspended selling these sort of um, properties on this terms a while ago. Are there other house builders out there who are still doing it? Yes, there's some in my constituency still uh, building on, on a uh, leasehold basis, and when I've questioned them, they haven't come back with anything I consider to be a satisfactory answer. But uh, if the government uh, intervene and, and stop that happening moving forward, that's great. But as, as you said at the start of the piece, what is going to happen to those people who, who are already stuck on these owners' leases? We need proper plan from government to deal with those abuses that have already uh, entered the system. Come on then, Justin, name names. Who, who are these people? Well, uh, you've already identified Taylor Wimpy as probably one of the uh, worst examples of, uh, of owners' leases for the... Uh, 10 year doubling uh, ground rent. Um, certainly, there are uh, issues with the uh, offer that they are making because it won't actually uh, release people from their lease, it will simply change them to an RPI. And that may mean that other clauses within the lease, which uh, we're not too happy about, such as uh, having to pay fees for permissions to pension uh, or even ask a question of their uh, freeholder, will still be there. Uh, what we want really is a system where uh, people are able to buy uh, their freeholds in a, in a cost-effective, uh, transparent and uh, quick way. And I don't think we have that at the moment. I don't think anything we've heard today uh, leads us to that place. I also want a uh, proper DCLG Select Committee inquiry into how this all started in the first place, because I think uh, there seems to have been a, a decision across the board from a number of developers to uh, enter into this business model, which has now been shown beyond a doubt not to work in the interest of consumers. So we want to make sure lessons are learned and this doesn't happen again in the future. Yeah, this has been going on quite a while now, hasn't it? Now, do you think the, the house builders should face, for example, charges for mis-selling in the way the banks did with PPI? Has it got to that level, do you think? Well, I, I have described it in the past as the PPI of the house building industry, um, but I think that's why we need a select committee inquiry, because we need to get these people... Uh, before 
the committee giving evidence about why they made this decision in the first place to uh, effectively uh, build in a second income stream for the properties that they were building. Um, what was the role of the developers? What was the role of the advisors? What was the role of the lenders? There are huge numbers of questions about how this all happened in the first place because it's, it, it can't be a coincidence that so many people are now uh, waking up and realising that they've been signed up for something that is not what they thought it was. Quite. So, in other words, it's possible in your eyes that uh, lawyers and the conveyancing uh, sector may have been in on this racket as well, then? Well, uh, that's what we need to find out. I've done a survey of my constituents who, who were signed up for uh, these leasehold properties, and about 80% of them have told me that they didn't uh, understand or appreciate what it was that they were being signed up to. And I've seen some of the leases myself there. They're very uh, difficult documents to understand. And I don't think the advice that was given in some instances was, was clear enough about the, the implications of that. Uh, you've also got to look at uh, where lenders have got involved. Uh, did they actually know uh, that they were uh, lending money on properties that would potentially become unsellable within a, a few decades? That, that again, is a, is a big question that needs answering. All right, Justin Matters, we've got to leave it there. Appreciate you joining me. Thank you.